For many years, India has been trying to catch up with China. Its strategy is to strengthen cooperation with Western countries and even regard China as its biggest competitor. Recently, India has stepped up its efforts and started to set up various obstacles for Chinese auto companies and impose tariffs of up to 30% on some steel products exported from China. Faced with these measures by India, China certainly cannot sit idly by. Recently, there are reports that relevant Chinese departments are studying a series of countermeasures, including restricting Chinese auto companies from transferring core technologies when building factories overseas. Especially for India, it even explicitly prohibits any investment related to the automotive industry. Experts believe that if this policy is really implemented, India's automotive industry may face a huge impact. So the question is, why is China suddenly unwilling to invest in India's automotive industry? What impact will this countermeasure have on India? If you like our video content, please click to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can receive all our latest video content. Now let's get into today's topic. In recent years, China's electric vehicle industry has achieved remarkable achievements. Now, Chinese cars have been exported to more than 200 countries and regions. According to the latest data from the China Automobile Association, from January to August 2024, China's automobile exports reached 3.21 million, an increase of 69% over the same period last year. You know, the annual export volume in 2023 was only 4 million, and this growth rate is very amazing. With the wave of global electrification, the competitiveness of Chinese cars will only become stronger and stronger, and the export volume in 2024 is likely to continue to rise sharply. However, the rapid development of China's automobile industry has also made some countries feel a little uneasy. They are worried that Chinese cars have too high a share of the local market, threatening the local automobile industry. At the same time, many countries envy China's success and think that it would be great if their own automobile industry could be like China. And India is one of these countries. Over the past decade, the Indian government has been trying to promote its own automobile industry, but has not been able to enter the international market. Therefore, India began to relax its foreign investment review policy, proposing that as long as the proportion of foreign investment does not exceed 15%, no advance review is required. The purpose of doing this is to make it easier and faster for foreign companies to invest in India, hoping to improve the level of local industries through the automobile manufacturing technology of these foreign companies. As early as 2019, Tesla expressed its intention to build a factory in India, and India was also full of expectations for this project, hoping that Tesla could land. But after a few years, this plan has never made any substantial progress. Some experts analyze that Tesla may be aware that if it really invests in building a factory in India, it may face a series of complex supervision and potential fines. It may even cause Tesla's operations to encounter many unnecessary troubles, forcing Tesla to withdraw from the Indian market. Therefore, Tesla has never dared to really start this project. Of course, in addition to Tesla, Chinese electric car, giant BYD, also plans to invest $1 billion in India in 2023 to build a large automobile production base. But in the end, this proposal was rejected by the Indian government on the grounds of national security. What's more interesting is that India not only sets obstacles in approval, but also requires BYD to share core technology before building a factory locally. In this regard, BYD certainly cannot accept this condition and finally cancels the investment plan. In fact, there may be some deeper reasons behind India's rejection of these investments. Many people believe that one of the main reasons is the price advantage of Chinese cars. The cost effectiveness of Chinese cars is very outstanding. Not only are the functions almost comparable to those of Western brands, but the price is also nearly 20% cheaper, even for export models. If Chinese cars enter the Indian market on a large scale, 
the development of India's local automobile industry will become more difficult. In addition, in the past few years, Western countries have been suppressing China's electric vehicle industry. If India wants to gain support from the West and promote the development of its own automobile industry, it will naturally have to cooperate with the West to restrict the expansion of Chinese cars in the local market. However, it is worth noting that in the face of these sanctions from India, China did not sit idly by. Recently, China introduced a new ban, which directly dealt a fatal blow to India's electric vehicle industry. What exactly happened? In September this year, some media broke the news that relevant Chinese departments are preparing a new regulation requiring major automakers not to transfer core technologies when building factories overseas, especially explicitly prohibiting any automobile-related investment in India. This is undoubtedly a big news for India. After all, India also hopes to attract investment from Chinese automakers and use China's advanced technology to promote the upgrading and development of its electric vehicle industry. However, if China's decision is officially implemented, it means that India will not be able to use China's technology to accelerate the electrification process, which will undoubtedly greatly slow down the development of its electric vehicle industry. Although this policy has not yet been officially announced, the mere rumor has made India nervous and uneasy. So, what is the reason that China is no longer willing to invest in the automotive field in India? As far as I know, one of the reasons behind this is related to a series of sanctions taken by the Indian government against China recently. Take last week, for example, the Indian Ministry of Finance just issued a new ban, announcing a tariff of up to 30% on some steel products exported from China. You know, China is India's largest source of steel imports, and this policy is obviously mainly aimed at China. India's choice to impose tariffs on Chinese steel at this time is clearly an attempt to get closer to the West and further consolidate its relations with Western countries. So China will certainly not remain silent in the face of India's groundless sanctions. At present, China is playing a game with almost the entire Western camp, and naturally it is impossible for India to exert pressure at will at this juncture. But my analysis is that there is another important reason behind China's adoption of these measures. That is, China's electric vehicle manufacturing technology has been at the forefront of the world. And many countries hope that China can set up factories in their local areas to learn and draw on these advanced technologies. The problem is that with the establishment of more and more overseas factories and R&D centers, core technologies will inevitably flow out. If these factories are located in some countries with less perfect industrial bases, the risks may be relatively controllable, but for those countries with more mature industrial systems, this is undoubtedly helping them to cultivate future competitors. This is obviously not conducive to the long-term development of China's electric vehicle industry. Therefore, the Chinese government has long issued a warning to remind domestic car companies not to be tempted by foreign government investment commitments, so as not to sacrifice their own technological advantages for the sake of immediate interests. In fact, a similar situation has already occurred in India. As early as 2017, China's SAIC Group became the first Chinese car company to set up a factory in India. At that time, SAIC acquired General Motors' Halal plant in India and transformed it into SAIC MG India with an investment of 450 million US dollars. This action soon attracted the attention of JSW Group, a local Indian company. With the support of the Indian government, JSW Group forcibly acquired the shares of SAIC MG India through a low price acquisition. By the end of 2023, JSW Group acquired 26% of MG's equity for 310 million US dollars and purchased 354 million additional shares of the company for 120 million US dollars. In the end, JSW Group held a total of 35% of MG's shares. This means that SAIC MG India is no longer a wholly owned enterprise of SAIC Group, but a Sino Indian joint venture and Indian companies have mastered some of the technology. This is the potential risk of China's overseas investment. Therefore, these recent restrictions introduced by China are, 
to some extent, also intended to protect its domestic automotive industry from the threat of technology outflow. So if China really bans any automotive-related investment in India, what impact will this have on India? From the current perspective, if this ban from China really takes effect, it will undoubtedly be a fatal blow to the Indian automobile industry. According to my investigation, even if Chinese automakers do not set up factories in India, they're still able to seize India's market share through other means. In August this year, BYD officially announced that it would abandon its investment plan in India and instead decided to invest $1 billion in Pakistan to build an automobile factory, which is expected to be completed in the first half of 2026. Despite the long-standing disputes between India and Pakistan, trade between the two countries is still proceeding normally. Once China's automobile factory in Pakistan is completed, it can export cars to the Indian market through Pakistan. More importantly, Pakistan's manufacturing technology level is far behind that of China, so China does not have to worry about its core technology being stolen by Pakistan. In addition, China and Pakistan have always had a solid relationship, and in long-term investment cooperation, they can naturally enjoy a more stable environment. It is worth mentioning that after BYD announced this investment plan, Chinese automakers such as Great Wall Motors, Chang'an Automobile, and SAIC Group also expressed their intention to enter the Pakistani market to further consolidate the influence of Chinese automakers in the region. For the Indian government, becoming a manufacturing power has always been its long-term goal. However, to achieve this goal, it is necessary to rely on the government to make substantial breakthroughs in related fields. If it blindly relies on the support of Western countries to promote development, it is undoubtedly a wrong choice. If the Indian government continues this approach and does not adjust its strategy in time, the final result is likely to be that India itself will completely fail in this game. So what do you think? To not miss out on our future projects and news updates, please make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. We will continue to provide you with more exciting and interesting content.